We have a top 10 showdown in Athens in what is perhaps Georgia's toughest test of the season as the ninth ranked Ole Miss Rebels travel to take on the back-to-back -back national champions in the Georgia Bulldogs. So can Ole Miss storm into Athens? and shock the nation, and maybe show the country they are, in fact, a playoff contender, or will Georgia once again reign supreme at home as they continue their quest for a three-peat? That is the question we're going to answer today. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're so glad you could join us today, ready to break down everything you need to know for this massive top 10 showdown in the SEC. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the country over there, guys. We are on a 62-29 to 29 run against the spread. That is over 68%. 62-29 to 29 run against the spread. So if you want to get some guaranteed winnings, if you want to win big with one of the lowest price in the country, a subscription that lasts a full 365 days, a service that gives you the best customer service in the country that guarantees response times within the day, this is the place for you. No other handicapper is going to do this for you. We're beating out over 80% of them. If you want to win big, join our GE Nation. Go sign up for those expert picks down in the description below. So let's take a look at this game, guys. So much at stake here, right? A top 10 showdown. Ole Miss, you know, one loss to Alabama about a month ago. And you're looking at this game and you're like, if Ole Miss finds a way to pull off this win over Georgia, not only does it shake up the SEC, but we've got to start taking Ole Miss as a serious SEC, uh, as a as a playoff contender, even though they might not even win the SEC West. That's the crazy thing about this. So a lot's at stake for both of these teams here. It's also an intriguing matchup, not because it's a cross division game. We don't see Ole Miss play Georgia very often. It's also the first matchup we've seen with Lane Kiffin, the offensive mastermind, against Kirby Smart the defensive mastermind. So a fantastic clash of styles here on Saturday night. It's going to be a fun one. As Lane Kiffin would say, get your popcorn ready. Take a look at the offenses. We'll start with Ole Miss. Of course, they are electric. We just called Lane Kiffin a mastermind, so of course the offense would be good. The Rebels are 11th in the country, averaging over 475 yards per game, nearly 300 of those coming through the air. And that's kind of the inverse of last year, right? The defense was, or the running game was so good for Ole Miss last year. It was kind of the focal point of the offense. Uh, this year, it's more of the passing game. Not to say the running game is bad. Rebels are still averaging over 180 on the ground, but the passing game is definitely what is the focus and the main key for Ole Miss and their offense. Jackson Dart throwing for over 2,400 yards, 16 touchdowns to just four interceptions. Quinshawn Judkins got off to a slow start at the beginning of the year. Already has over 790 yards now and 12 touchdowns. Has rushed for at least 100 yards in each of the last three. They may need another big day from him on the ground if they want to win this game. But the trio out wide, the wide receiver core, the pass catching core for Ole Miss is the key. Trey Harris, who had 213 reception yards against AM, Jordan Watkins, and Dayton Wade, they are all phenomenal pass catchers, a major reason for Ole Miss's offensive success. They're going to be a very tough test for this Georgia defense to stop in what is arguably the best offense that Georgia has seen all year and may end up being the best they see all year long. That might even include the college football playoff. Take a look at Georgia. Their offense is really dang good, too. We talk so much about their defense, defense, defense. Well, what about the offense, right? Georgia is sixth in the country in offense, right? Averaging over 493 yards per game, then 325 of which are coming through the air. So very similar to Ole Miss. You know, I feel like for years under Kirby Smart, we focused so much on the run with Georgia's offense. The passing game certainly has been there. Stetson Bennett was absolutely phenomenal, as we know. But I don't think any of us expected Carson Beck to be playing this well in his first year as a starter. He's not your average first-year starting quarterback, right? Again, averaging over 325 passing yards per game, has thrown for over 2,700 yards, 16 touchdowns, just four interceptions. And despite losing Brock Bowers, despite losing one of the best players in the entire country, one of the best threats on offense, this Georgia offense still put up 315 passing yards against Florida and 254 last week in a top-12 victory over Missouri. But, ultimately, Georgia does need their other pass catchers to step up. They need guys to step up like Ole Miss has. You know, losing Brock Bowers is bad. Dominic Lovett's going to have to take a step up. 398 reception yards, two touchdowns. That's it. Ladd McConkey, Ra Ra Thomas, they've all, someone's got to make plays out wide for the young quarterback. Dejan Edwards is phenomenal at running back. Almost 700 yards rushing on the year, but... If Georgia wants to win this game, if they want to go on to maybe win another national championship, they're going to need the wide receivers, the pass catchers, to step up big and rally behind 
a young quarterback who's playing great ball but really hasn't faced anybody this tough. That's going to be the key. Defense. Ole Miss, it's mid. I'm going to put it bluntly. Not going to say they're great. Not going to say they're bad. They're mid. They're average. They're mediocre. Allowing 366 yards per game. Allowing 228 of those through the air. 135 of those on the ground. Uh, Look, this, this is a team, guys, that if you go back and look at what Ole Miss has done against their quality opponents, against the better opponents they face, they haven't fared well defensively. Against Alabama, they allowed 356 yards to the Crimson Tide. They allowed 637 yards to LSU in an absolute shootout at the end of September. They allowed 153 rushing yards alone to Auburn and allowed 457 total yards to Texas A&M last week, including 152 on the ground. So, again, the rushing defense for Ole Miss has kind of been suspect. This might be a game where we talk a lot about Carson Beck and we talk about how great Georgia's passing attack's been. He kind of takes a seat, take a seat in the back seat. You know, he's like, hey, you know what? Dejan Edwards, you do the work. Ole Miss clearly hasn't been able to stop the ground game against Alabama, LSU, Auburn, A&M. We're the freaking Georgia Bulldogs at home with a strong offensive line and an offense that knows how to run the football. Let's pound the rock until Ole Miss proves to us that they can stop it. And we'll pound the rock enough, just enough, that it's going to set up some really good deep shots and set the play action for Carson Beck. So if you are Ole Miss, you have to find a way to slow down the run, man, because you've been un- unable to do it against the better teams you've faced on your schedule so far this year. You have a mediocre defense. And now you're playing one of the best teams in the entire country. They've got 31 sacks on the year. You force 14 turnovers. That's great. None of that's going to matter if you can't stop the run and you can't generate a little bit of pressure on the young quarterback. Georgia, on the other hand, their defense always extremely strong. We talked about it. It's going to be a beautiful chess match, right? It's going to be Lane Kiffin's offense trying to figure out how to dissect Georgia's defense and then vice versa. Kirby Smart's defense finding a way to slow down one of the most electric offenses in the entire country. But the Bulldogs, guys, they're ninth overall in total defense, allowing just 282 yards per game. They're only giving up 100 rushing yards per game and only 182 passing yards per game. It's pretty dang good. Now, granted, Georgia has faced a cupcake schedule, a ridiculously easy schedule for our reigning national champion. Their toughest test of the year to date was last week when they took on Missouri. They won that game by nine points, but the Tigers gave them a run for their money. That game, I think, was a little bit closer than maybe some expected. But regardless, a win's a win's a win, no matter who's it against and how good or bad they are. Georgia, guys, the stats speak for themselves, has not allowed more than 256 passing yards in a single game this year. That's it. They have not allowed over 250 passing yards in six straight games. This secondary is really, really good. Granted, they're facing the most difficult passing attack they've seen all year long to date, but they haven't allowed over 250 in six straight games. That's really, really good. And you don't just simply go in there and bulldoze Georgia. You know, Cody Schrader in Missouri had a little bit more success than we thought they would last week on the ground. Georgia still found a way to win, still forced it to where Brady Cook had to go out there and deliver, and he threw two interceptions late in the game to seal the victory for the Bulldogs. And they end up finding a way, once again, to put all that pressure on Jackson Dart, all that pressure on the Ole Miss passing attack. It's going to be a bit of an issue. Ole Miss needs that balance. They need that balance. And if they aren't able to hit those home run balls, like Georgia's been preventing, again, a ridiculous stat of not allowing over 250 passing yards in six straight games, Ole Miss and their offense will struggle. So what's going to happen, guys? Saturday night in Athens, didn't get the 2.30 slot. They've listened. You know, Georgia, a lot of fans were upset. They had too many early games, too many day games in Athens. When are we going to get night games at home? Well, they answered, and they gave it to them with one of the biggest games of the year. Number two versus number nine, in between the hedges. What's going to happen? Georgia's going to win. 100% 100% here, guys. I'm hoping for a good game. I hope it's a close game. I hope it's a fun game. But I cannot pick against Georgia. They've been unstoppable for the last two years. They're at home under the light. They survived last week against Missouri. And I actually could see this game being relatively similar. Where Ole Miss comes out there and throws everything they've got at the Bulldogs. Every last thing they've got. And the game's close in the fourth quarter. And that's when the Georgia defense steps up and makes a play. That's when Kirby Smart wins the chess match. Georgia wins this game at home. I think it will be relatively close, but they survive, remain undefeated, keep Ole Miss out of the playoff discussion. A win would put them in there. A loss keeps them out. They will be put out, and the Bulldogs hand into a massive game next weekend in Knoxville against Tennessee as they inch closer and closer to that three-peat. So once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure you continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks 
over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. We're on a 62 to 29 run against the spread. So if you want to in on that winning run, if you went in on some of the best picks in the entire country, go sign up for those picks today. Cheap prices, one of the best marks in the entire country in a full year-long subscription. You can't miss out. You cannot get any better than that. Go sign up. Again, the link down in the description below. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert.